So here we are in that same part studio looking at the cube that we created in the last video. If you'll notice down at the bottom, it just says part studio one. So it might be helpful to rename this as something that might help us remember what it is. So cube one is a good way to rename that. So that gets done by right clicking and choosing the rename option. There's also a tab called assembly one. If you click on that, it's a completely blank space. This is where you would go if you're wanting to actually put several parts together and actually attach them. But in order for us to use this assembly space, we need multiple part studios in this particular document or file. So in the bottom left corner, there's a plus sign that says insert new element. So go ahead and click on that and choose create part studio. So that's where we'll always begin with individual parts. So in this in the rest of this video, what I'd like to show you is something called a two-way letter. It's kind of a fun little uh, trick that you can do. So I'm going to rename this by right-clicking, choosing Rename, and call this two-way letter. I'm going to begin on the front plane, select that, and choose Sketch. I'll use the View Cube to see this um, front on. And up in the Tools, I'm going to choose the text box. If you are zoomed in or zoomed out too far, you might see different things up in your tools. And so if you're ever looking for something and you're like, wow, I cannot find that, click on search tools. And if you type in text, you'll locate it. It'll even highlight it if it happens to be uh, up where you can see it. So go ahead and click on the origin. That's where I always begin. And draw a box, whatever size you want, and pick a letter. It doesn't matter which letter you choose. Uh, a nice letter is going to be one that has a nice flat side to it. So my first letter will be K, but you could pick something else. And notice that this letter, even though we started it at the origin, the bulk of it is actually a little bit off to the side, the way that it's made. So go ahead and click on the green check mark. And then let's extrude this shape, and we can have it be as deep or as, as narrow as we want. So I'm going to go about 1.5 inches on this one. So it's not quite a cube, but it's got a little chunkiness to it. So this K was really nice because I have this nice flat panel on the left side that I can work with. If your left side is not a flat panel, you will need to create a plane, a plane. And so what I mean by that is we will need to have a right plane parallel sitting on the edge of your letter. So for example, I'm going to do it on this edge of my letter just so you can see how to create a parallel plane. So on the right of my default geometry over in this left uh, browser bar, I'm going to right click and choose offset plane. And now, an extra plane pops up, and I'm going to drag that arrow out to wherever it appears to be kind of on the edge of my letter K. So I still want it to be touching the K, just want it to be really, really close to that, that edge. I might back that up just a little. Okay. And right click. So on this plane, plane one, I'm going to go ahead and create my sketch on that plane to help show you what to do. And so over here, I'm going to select the text box again, get it nice and aligned. There we go. And here I'll put my next letter, in this case, the letter A. And green check that. So as you can see, it's quite a bit wider than how deep my K is. So I'm going to grab that corner and pull that in. Okay. So it's not going to be nearly as tall as my K, but it does fit. I could have perhaps gone back and changed the depth of the K, and that might be something to look into for the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark that and hit extrude and choose my letter A. And this time, instead of extruding it, I'm going to select intersect. And this way, it's going back through my letter K. And I'm going to grab that arrow and go all the way through 
the solid. And then I'll click the green check mark. All right, so because my A wasn't tall enough, it actually cut off the top part of my K. That's a bummer. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Okay, so here's the good news. There are always undo buttons. So I undid that. I'm gonna undo placing that A. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make my K thicker. I needed it to be deeper. So I'm gonna right click on extrude one and show dimensions. It did not show me those. Oh, I just wanna edit, edit extrude one. There we go. And so I do want this to be quite a bit thicker. So I'm gonna make that three inches, uh, maybe two and a half inches. That looked really deep. <laughs> Let's do two and a half inches. Okay. And then on plane one, that's where I want to place my K, uh, my A, my next letter. So I'm going to hit sketch. And then I'm going to draw out that letter A again. And see if this time it seems to fit. It does fit pretty well. So I'm going to just tuck that in just a little. You can see it's going to cut off just a little tiny bit off the top. But I think this is going to be a good look. All right. So once again, we'll hit uh, extrude, choose the A, go back to intersect, Oops. choose the A again if it happened to disappear for some reason, and then drag that all the way through the solid. And click the green check mark. So now when we rotate this around, it looks like an A from one angle, and the A is symmetric, so it does look like an A on both sides. And it looks like a K from the front and a backwards K from the back. So this is one way that you can create some initials um, and have just kind of a fun look at some different letterings. So if you tried it with the K and the A, great. If you haven't yet, try it with your initials. You might have to add that plane if you have um, uh, an edge that isn't quite flat. But try it out. Experiment. See what you can do.